with so many people from around the country. So it's, it's, it's really a blessing for me. Um, glad to have everybody on board. Um, and we're good. First of all, I'm going to I'm going to uh, I'm going to thank you for your patience. And uh, as we go through this, this is a kind of a first for me online. I've done some things in person, but but not this way. But we'll get through it, and we'll share some different ideas, and and away we go. So, are we set, Amy? Uh oh. We're all set. I, I'm okay. sorry, I muted myself as well. So if everyone can mute, and then we'll go back to questions. After slide five, is that right, Bob? Uh, yeah, hang on a minute, Amy. I'm having trouble getting back to where we were. Bear with just a moment. We're actually not. Hang on. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay. So, right. Um, let's start by, by talking a little bit about um, what we're all facing right now, and that's a revenue challenge. Uh, obviously, we, we are concerned and we look to um, other diocesan uh, newspapers, and, and, and we're all kind of sort of in the same boat. Nobody has a ton of revenue right now. Everybody's kind of concerned about, uh, about um, you know, the future. And what we're trying to do here is to find some of those alternate revenue sources in order to gain, give you additional tools and ideas uh, for bringing in a, additional funds, additional revenue over the course of the year. And um, we've, we've in, in past um, presentations, we've shared some, there's been a lot of out there about some different things, different ways to look at it. And this, we've kind of looked at it as a 20,000 foot level where we've talked about you know, most folks know about, you know, special occasion inserts. We have funeral guides, wedding guides, and, um, uh, and some others that are around there. We've talked about, well, maybe there's a, uh, a partner radio station where you can do packaged media buys. Uh, we've talked about, uh, you know, some digital publications, um, you know, taking the print paper and converting it over. And, and gaining a, a, a subscription base and maybe something additional to sell to your advertisers in terms of a flip book. Uh, the Catholic Sentinel does that right now. E-newsletters, um, FSIs, the inserts that you take in from, from uh, retailers and, and distributors and, and whomever else about to throw them into the newspaper and, and distribute them to your, to your audience. Um, some folks have a Catholic directory uh, the, uh, the Catholic Sentinel does. We've been doing that for quite a long time. That's been kind of a staple for us. But where I want to kind of go now is, is where I haven't heard a lot of, maybe you have, um, but um, it's with regard to custom publishing. And so um, let's see where we can go. So what, what is custom publishing and, and, and why do we want to, to look at this? What you really want to do is try to leverage the value of what you already have. Um, your current product right now is, is valued, it's read, uh, and, the, and the audience is, is almost typically um, very loyal. They read every issue, they read it thoroughly, and that's valuable. That's a tool. Um, Custom publishing also presents a, 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 a very predictable and significant in, income influx. Um, what we're trying to do here is, um, you know, dependent upon the number of pages and the, the breadth of your audience, it can be a significant income hit into your, into your revenue budget, and that's, and that's important. Uh, we produce three different custom publications, custom inserts over the course of a year. And it has a it has a, a meaningful uh, input into our bottom line. Um, the other th reason for custom publishing is is editorial and production talents that you already have. You don't um, you don't you may may not need to add to your staff to do anything um, with with custom publishing. And depending upon the timing, it may fill in some of the low spots in terms of of what's expected of, of, 
um, your editorial and your 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 advertising folks. Um, the fourth thing that it does is it builds uh, builds uh, your, your brand. Um, if you are working with a client that has that's a, a kind of sort of a, a name brand around the community or in the region, you know it kind of adds to the validity and and to um, in, in, into the value of what of, of your brand itself. So um, it, that's that's significant in itself. It, it 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 gains additional attention from your audience, but it also is a tool to leverage when you're going after other business. Okay, uh, people like to see name brands out there, and they feel more comfortable visiting with you when you have something like that. Um, you're adding the value of your paper to the readership. Uh, because you're giving them more, you're giving them more information, you're giving them more resources, um, and 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 people kind of look for that. They want to see something a little bit different. They want to see. They want to learn something new, and the more they learn that's new and different, the more they're going to come back and keep reading your paper and looking at other things as well. You want to get them into the paper. You want to get them consistent. You want to get them loyal, and things that are new and different do that. Um, so. That's important. Um, I mentioned a little bit about timing that fits within the editorial calendar. So um, if your clients are or, or client is, is open to when um, that um, when when a, a, an insert may happen, you can legitimately fit that within some of the other um, some of the other work that you're already doing with regular issues uh, at the Catholic Sentinel. Um, usually the summertime is a low point and so we start working with and uh, uh, we start working with uh, clients in planning for the following year and kind of mapping out what what uh, what we can do for them so when we're talking about maybe something to, to, to touch bases briefly with is is what is a custom publication and basically what it is, is you have a, 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 a client who wants to get exclusive um, information out to your audience. And we're not necessarily talking about advertorial here. We are talking about meaningful educational information that people may want to know more about. And um, sometimes it has a very direct purpose, okay? Uh, in some cases, it may be they're trying to, to raise funds, you know, for their annual, um, for their annual revenue budget. Uh, in some cases, it may be, you know, straight information out there. They want people to know exactly, for example, what the diocese is, is doing. Um, there, are, there are a lot of different applications here. So who are these potential clients, okay? And I want you to to kind of open up your your uh, your options and your mind to to not just what's local to you. Let's talk about a little bit broader um, uh, casting of the of the net. So they may be regional hospitals. For example, we have um, Providence Healthcare here. They're a large regional hospitals uh, group that is in, largely in the Pacific Northwest. Regional universities and colleges. University of Portland, um, the, the major Catholic uh, university in this area is, is, is based in Portland, of course, but there are others uh, in, the, in the region too that may want to, to uh, get exclusive information or, P, or, or, or information about the college, whether it's for admittance or whether it's about you know, just their own brand building or, um, or it's about um, support for for their university or college out there too. Uh, charitable organizations. Uh, one of the the clients that we work with right now, and and we'll we'll look at a little bit closely, a little bit later on, is Catholic Charities of Oregon, and they use um, their specialized insert in the in the Catholic Sentinel. Uh, as a major part of their annual fundraising and operations. Uh, Medicare insurance providers, uh, you know, again, I can kind of point back to Providence Healthcare also has uh, uh, a, a Medicare insurance program. Uh, funeral providers, maybe whether it's going to be a, a few or maybe it's a large one, 
wants to get information out to folks about clearing the air about you know what is what is acceptable what is the what you know what what is um what things to do and um and what are some of the different um options available to folks as they're planning out funerals or maybe dealing with that in the future so these are just five different um uh, different ideas here so they are typically folks with larger marketing budgets uh, this is not going to be a, um, a, a, a small um, um, a funeral home kind of a thing. Uh, it is going to be, you know, again, these regional hospitals, folks that have a reasonable amount of money to plan and use uh, over the course of their year. So look at, at those. Kind of doing a little bit of research is, is really important. So what do you need in order to succeed with, with, with a custom publication or custom insert? And I, I, I apologize, I kind of use that kind of interchangeably, but, but I think you get it. So you have to know your audience. You have to know your audience. And, and the strongest way to, to know your audience to, is to invest in a readership survey, okay? It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be you know, huge, but you have to know who is reading your paper, okay? So I strongly encourage you to find a way to invest in a readership survey. And whether that's a, you know, a single moment in time over a course of a month or two, or whether it's over a stretch of a season or maybe even a year as you kind of plan to, to maybe you, you map out when you're going to want to do or start implementing custom inserts, get that together, find ways, whether it's, it's maybe it's a, an incentive um, you know, I think we offered a, an iPad mini at one point a few years ago and folks could submit their, um, their, their survey and be entered into a, a, a contest and, or, or, or uh, I guess a contest um, to, to win an iPad mini. We had a huge number of folks um, uh, give us response for because of that. And so uh, find different ways gather from different um, different sources, events, paper, radio, uh, online, you know, uh, set that up that way. You have to have a strong understanding and an editorial production commitment. This is not just advertising and just editorial. And this is where even today, um, that there is strong feelings, can be strong feelings about, about straight editorial, does not cross the line into advertising, does not cross the line into production and so forth. The, 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 the truth of today is that those lines cannot be as definitive as they have 10, 15, 20 years ago. They just can't, they, they can't and, and, and and you continue to expect that you're going to have strong revenue. Um, it is important for editorial independence, of course, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. But the bottom line is that your team has to be on board. And so you may feel that those lines get blurred a little bit, and that's okay. Uh, it is the reality of today that, and the challenge of today uh, to, to uh, to pull in more revenue for uh, your newspaper, for your media, and at the same time, find that knife's ed edge balance about, uh, about, not, uh, about making sure that you are not a PR um, source for your, your client, but that you remain credible, uh, that you remain valuable, uh, because if, if you're not credible, it's, it's, if, if it comes across as PR, people see through that, the audience sees through that, and they won't read it, okay? And it can, it, it can damage you a little bit down the road in terms of a reputation or word of mouth. You wanna keep that independence, but you wanna do it in a way that you're providing information about and for your client's purpose that is gonna be interesting and, and um, um, in, in valuable for, for everybody. The third thing is, is pre-planning. I mean, planning cannot be underestimated. You, you have to map this out well in advance. Uh, the process that we do, for example, for Catholic Charities is, is a four-month process. 
we from meeting with the with the client uh, late in the summer. Matter of fact, it's it's a six month process. We start working with the client uh, at the at the in the middle of summer, and the uh, the insert is produced and distributed in February. Okay, so it's that amount of time that you need to be thinking about your client, the product, the process, the materials, and the distribution. The, the project and the client management is, is we're gonna talk about that, and, and, it, and it's a 20,000 foot view. Um, Lastly, it's, it's, it's communications. Um, there, there's, there is a, um, a commitment with OCP and, uh, about communications, and it goes kind of like this. You cannot, cannot over-communicate, whether it's with your client or whether it's internally. You have to know what's going on at all times, okay? So that's huge. So there are three, what, I, what I've kind of bucket bucketed into three custom insert models. And the first, as you see here, is a single source project. It's, it's information and education only driven. There, uh, and, and the second then is a joint venture, what I call a joint venture project. And so what we're looking at there is that education influence, but they're looking to be able to offset the cost for doing that, okay? The third is a sponsorship project where, um, where they have a particular budget, they are going to be, be producing this insert, and, but they are offsetting their own cost for this with their own program. And again, don't, you know, I see the question marks over folks' heads, but we'll deal with that in just a moment. I'll share with you what those are like. So what is a single source project? So it's typically all editorial com content as we've spoken about. There is no ads, there are no ads in the insert. Uh, the content is either supplied or specifically written um, by your team and it's direct billed to that particular client. The example that I've used here is the annual financial report from the Archdiocese of Portland and Oregon. And it's, again, it's purely an example Okay, um, there, there may be instances where other clients want something very similar. They're not worried about uh, gaining back or, or selling ads or getting revenue to, to pay for the cost of doing this. Bob? Yeah? Bob, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna jump in. Your slides aren't showing. They're not? No. Shoot. Have they not been showing? No, and I thought you were talking before your first slides, but now that you're further along, I realized you're. <laughs> Bear with me. Do you see that now? No, I think um, you should be able to just click the screen share at the bottom because they worked in our test. Hang on a moment, Amy. Okay. I'm still not seeing it. I'm seeing like a phone number or a phone, a green circle phone, like a phone. Is that what everybody else is seeing? Like a, a big green circle? Yes. Big yeah. Green circle. yeah. I think if you hit, did you hit screen share? Yeah, uh, the screen share, the share screen is out there. Yep. And it says uh, multiple participants can share simultaneously. Sure. You, 
It, the, that's how it needs to be set. So, well, I could do one participant at a time. I'm gonna try that and go ahead and try again because you're the co-host. Okay. Is that helping? I have share screen. One participant can share at a time. Yeah, and that's what we want. But so it should work the same as our test. Um, do you have do you have the slides on a separate screen? I do. Yep. So when you hit the share screen, because if I click it right now, I can see all of my separate windows. And so you, if you click on the window that has the slide, it should be good. That didn't, that's, oh, there, there it is. So Bob, there was um, in the chat, mm -hmm. so uh, they asked if you could maybe restart where you show examples of custom printing. You bet, bear with just a moment here. Can you see that? Yes. So it's three custom insert models? Correct. We're good to go. OK. Folks, I'm sorry about that. OK. Everybody see that? Yes. OK. There we go. So um, not to repeat too much, but there's the, of the three different ones that are sitting out there, um, the first that we're looking at is a single source project. And again, that's in this particular instance, in this, in this example, we're looking at the annual financial report. So um, it's all editorial content. Again, there's no ads within this piece. Uh, it uh, can be four to 16 <clears throat> pages. Um, the content is largely supplied or you're contracted to work that with those folks and it's direct billed to the client. The second one gets a little bit more interesting, and this is what, I'm, what I refer to as a joint venture project. And in this particular example, um, we work with CYO, um, the local Catholic youth organization, uh, to put together an annual insert that supports um, their, uh, their annual fundraising dinner event. Um, and what this does basically, it, uh, it is an education uh, insert that goes out across the archdiocese within the paper in a particular issue in advance of the dinner event where they uh, where they are, are, are largely they they raise most of their money for um, for camps for Camp Howard and for the uh, different um, sporting uh, programs that they have and it's terribly important to them and it's been a, a big help for, for both getting donations and for people just learning a little bit more about what they do and understanding the value of continuing on and participating in CYO programs. So it does have that editorial and ad content mix. You'll see advertising throughout and <clears throat> advertising um, varies from whether it's a, an eighth page to full page. Uh, the um, the, the advertisers themselves are billed directly. And what happens here that's different is that we work with the client well in advance. We share what these costs are. Uh, they have a price that they need to, that, that's out there. And um, we sell the ads ourselves against this. 
if there's a shortfall between the total amount of, of money that's brought in from the ads to the, the original price or cost that's quoted, that's what the client is responsible for, okay? And so um, it's handy. I mean, you're, you're really helping them out a lot uh, while they concentrate on, on other pieces and parts of what they're trying to do with their event. Um, and at the same time, um, you, you expose and you're, you're able to get uh, your own uh, clients, your regular advertising clients in a very special insert that's, that's really uh, valued across the board by families, supporters, the community, people who need and want to understand more about what CYO does. Are we still able, everybody still sees the slide? Yep. Okay. So the third one is a sponsorship project. So, and that's where the, um, the editorial and the ad, there's an editorial and ad content mix like the other, but here's where it differs. With Catholic Charities, for example, um, they have their major event, uh, they have the, what's called a, perhaps a gold uh, and, a, and a silver and a bronze sponsorship. And that's tied into uh, the amount of money, usually corporations uh, are, are willing to donate into Catholic Charities. And for a particular level, and they determine what that is, uh, they get a corresponding ad size in their insert. This was a 16 page insert. We've been doing this for the last three to four years. And uh, it's been quite successful for them. Um, you know, a major goal for them is what I said before. I mean, but it maybe even is more critical to them. Um, they, the Archdiocese of Portland uh, covers the Western half of the state. So from Portland all the way down to Ashland and beyond, you know, is, is what we cover. The folks in Ashland and, and, and Medford don't know that much about what Catholic Charities has been doing because the exposure down there hasn't been, uh, hasn't been as prevalent, of, obviously, as would it be up in Portland. Um, so it's important for them to get that information out. What they'll do then is when they are, um, when they've, they've got a sponsorship and say a quarter page ad is awarded to a particular company, they'll hand us the contact points for, uh, for ad uh, fulfillment in those companies and we take it from there. Uh, the company, excuse me, the Catholic Charities is direct build uh, from the quote that we give them at the beginning of the season and beginning of the planning process. Okay. Um, do we have any, any uh, questions right now, Amy? Sorry, I needed to unmute myself. Um, I, there was not, uh, no, people were just putting comments about the slides, but oh. is there anyone that has a specific question? You could unmute yourself and, and ask Bob and engage in some dialogue as to what he shared to this point? Bob, I have a question. This is Becky in Colorado Springs. Hi, Becky. Hi. Um, ha what is your normal uh, page count in, in your paper? Uh, it varies between, um, I'd, I'd say on average lately it's been 28 pages, but it varies between 20 and 32. Oh, wow. Okay. That's rather... Hefty. <laughs> Bob, are you a weekly paper? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I That's not coming through clear, Kevin. What's hit no. me again? Are, that? are you a weekly paper? We are, are bi monthly. And bi -monthly. so every, okay. every first and third Friday. So, Bob, someone's asking what is the profit for your inserts? So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. how much it costs and then how much you raise? Well, we typically try to shoot for a 20%, okay? Uh, you obviously, I mean, it, it, and, it, and it, it varies a little bit. Um, we, we, we are not, I mean, all these, uh, 
if you're doing something, something for Catholic Charities or for CYO, uh, those are important organizations and important to the mission of the, of the church and the diocese. And so there's not as much an emphasis on, <clears throat> on, on profit on that as there may be for somebody who's more, more of a commercial venture. Uh, but 20% generally is, uh, is the rule of thumb. What is the size of your staff to create the materials? And then do you, con do you have any contracted workers? Like we have a proofing contractor. Do you have anybody that you contract to help? Um, it's done, it, done like this. And it's, it's done as a partnership between ourselves and the client. We have um, one, two, three, we have four editorial folks, including, excuse me, including uh, Ilangwa, our managing editor. Uh, we have myself and Susan Hayes, who's, uh, we handled the advertising end of things. Um, what was it? What was the other part of the question, Amy? Uh, do you contract anybody? Oh, like sure. No, not for something like this, no. And I mentioned a minute ago that it is a, 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 a partnership between ourselves and the client. With a large client like that, they typically have a, a communications um, department or a marketing department. And those folks are instrumental in, in, as you're going through your planning process, about what are the topics that they want to cover, what's important about those topics. And in, in, for the most part, they offer up the resources, the editorial resources, the contact points for the stories, okay? So they are, they are telling you what stories uh, they're, they're after. They're giving you the, giving you the uh, a synopsis of what those stories should be about. They're giving you the, the resources for contacting those folks. And they have been largely responsible for the photo material that come in as well. So at that point, then um, a, a coordinator for the project um, on the editorial side may disseminate out the different different story assignments or may do them themselves um, to get those stories written. And again, as I mentioned, this is over a few months process. And so it's not something that's rushed through um, and, and, and done kind of haphazardly. It's very careful thought. And as I mentioned, it's important that the client understands that this is not PR for them. That is not, it, this, is, this is a story that's written about these topics um, that the client wants, but it is your editorial folks, professionals, who approach it and write about it as they would the stories in the, in the regular paper themselves. So uh, we have never had a case where the client was disappointed. In fact, they love that, um, that kind of sort of independence because it's a more newsworthy um, a piece of information, more newsworthy article that folks are reading. Does that help you? It does. And I just want to share a couple of comments. So for the Compass newspaper, uh, any of our diocesan curia, so people that teams at the diocese, so for instance, Catholic Charities is in our building, uh, Parish Life, we have Campus Ministry, um, but we do like four page inserts for our cemetery, um, anyone that is a diocesan corporation. Mm -hmm. And what we will do is sell, with those four pages, sell one full page of ad, and they're priced a little differently to pay for, so we, we get a little bit of revenue. But it in our diocese, it is a service to our other diocesan offices, which kind of helps build relationships. However, our editorial team is not involved. So when we do Catholic Charities, I work directly with the director of Catholic Charities. He sends the content and our designer di uh, designs it. So I go through it and um, kind of send her what should be in it. She creates a beautiful cover, but a lot of times they do their annual report. So another way I know for our editorial team, there's three and sometimes they are overwhelmed with um, and we have recently had it reduced hours as well. So trying to do all of those stories when we're doing internal office inserts, the designer and myself can 
can handle those, but they do provide the content. Mm -hmm. So, and we do know, like I see you have a special supplement published by the Catholic Sentinel. We do say this uh, special insert was brought to you by the Office of Parish Evangelization or whichever office it is. Mm -hmm. um, but just kind of to add a spin on to what you're already doing. Right, right. And, you know, they're, they're probably one of the top things that are rolling through people's minds is we haven't got the staff to do this, okay? Um, but all, what that really means to you is, is um, maybe, I mean, again, this is it's going to be a months long project, okay? And so uh, we fit this in, this work in between regular issues that we're doing throughout the, throughout the year, okay? And so um, it's doable. It really is doable. Um, and, you know, you can, you can produce something that really is special and important to that particular client. And again, the, the amount of revenue that pulls in can really be, uh, it, it can be valuable to you. Someone did ask also, what is your paper circulation? Um, it fluctuates throughout the year, as, as I would imagine that, that a lot of folks do. Um, and by that, what I mean is summertime when, when during vacations typically, or um, it, it, it usually goes down significantly. And around you know, fall, it starts up again when uh, school is back in session. So it may vary between, say, 17,000 uh, during the summertime to up to about 25,000 over the in, in peak periods of time over the course of the winter. This last year as well, excuse me, this year obviously is significantly different and we've made some adjustments here and there. But over the course of the past years, that's how the swing has been. That is helpful. Um, is the staff paid additionally for doing the custom publication work? No, it fits in, again, it fits in uh, between uh, the work they are doing on with other issues, okay? Um, and yeah, it, it fits in with the other work that they're doing. It's, it's intended to, 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 to fill in between those times. How many do you do a year? We do three right now. And these are the three examples that I've, I've um, put up to you. Beautiful. Any other questions? Does anybody want to unmute and ask Bob any other questions before he continues on or drop any other questions in the chat? Hi, Bob. Um, I'm Joanne DiNapoli from the tablet. I'm actually under Kim because I had trouble getting in, but I wanted to ask you, it says that, um, that you said that before uh, you, with CYO, you come up with a price. So in other words, like you say to CYO, it's, it's, Five thousand dollars, or uh, you know, for an eight pager, and then if they if you don't sell the ads for the five thousand, they make up for it. Is is that ha that's correct? Mm -hmm. So you come up. So on both cases, you come up with a uh, price for if it's eight pages, it's this amount. If it's ten pages, it's that, or, or twelve or twelve pages, it's this amount. And then mm -hmm. um, the so if CYO, let's say. It's the twelve pager, and and you said it's ten thousand. You only did eight thousand. CYO would give you the additional two thousand. Is that how it? That's, that's correct. Right, right. And where we go with costs is something that's that's, that's unique to each particular site. Okay, um, you have to understand and 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 do the research ahead of time to know what those costs are from your production people to the print to the paper, all that sort of good stuff. You get your quotes. And um, you understand your overhead, and you taught you work closely with those production uh, people to 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 I guess uh, for lack of a better term, get a budget a time budget for producing this this insert, um, and that's where you end up getting your cost per page. Okay, you're gonna have a base cost for producing it as you would with any normal printer, for example, but that as as the number of pages grows. Um, you can start doing the math and saying, here's our, my cost per page, okay? So mm -hmm. the 12-pager is X and the 16-pager is Y, okay? Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you, Bob. Sure, yeah. 
Bob, I have a question for you. Um, you, you talked about the 20%. I, I, I understand how to figure the costs. What I'm trying to evaluate if we were to do something like this is how much of a profit I want to make on a Catholic organization without feeling Catholic guilt. Right. Um, <laughs> so you, you mentioned 20%. I guess first I want to know, is that what you would charge a, a nonprofit Catholic group or, or, or is that more your corporate sponsorship for a more of a commercial venture and two what would be an example of what you would consider a commercial i mean everyone that we would do like catholic charity st vincent de paul catholic schools would all be nonprofit catholic agencies I, I can't picture i don't know what what a commercial one would be that we would do i mean we don't do cars or groceries or anything like that right, which i'm no. sure you don't either so right anyway. i think two examples would be uh, for example a regional hospital Okay, uh, and the other might be a uh, a university, in the in the list of examples that I I quoted a little earlier. Okay. Does that help you? Yes, it does. And also, the the twenty percent is that what you would charge a nonprofit Catholic uh, enterprise? A, a nonprofit Catholic enterprise. Um, it may go less. It may go less. Um, a large part of it may depend upon the quantity, okay, or the, the additional costs that we have if they only want it, um, um, uh, I guess, um, partly distributed throughout our entire uh, diocese. There are a lot of different other factors to it. We have to be able to cover our basic costs, you know, that includes labor, and you have to value your labor. It's important. You have a, an editorial team that is that that works hard for these kinds of uh, for this kind of work, and they deserve. Uh, we you, your your paper deserves to value that accordingly. So don't my my uh, you know although you, I mean it's it's up to you about whether you know how much you want to be able to incur in profit. What's what's acceptable to you, uh, but I can tell you that. What you do, don't, don't undervalue what you do and how important it is. If, for example, and let, let me put it to you like this, and, and I'll use the CYO example, okay? All right. Um, when we produce the, 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 the CYO piece, it's 16 pages, um, and it is, it is produced in advance of their, of their annual uh, Champions of Faith event in the fall. Um, and at that Champions of Faith event and, and before and after, people are donating, okay? And, you know, they come up with hundreds of thousands of dollars to fund their, 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 their organization, okay? Um, and, and, and the other thing is that for CYO, for example, they've had people who've read the insert that we produce and whether anonymously or, or not anonymously, donate a large chunks of money in the tens, th tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? So it's not just because of what we do, but what we do is important to what, to, as, is an important piece of what they, they present and what they get out of it. So don't undervalue that, okay? You're not trying to make a huge profit on it on Catholic charities or huge profit on CYO, um, but but your 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 paper needs the revenue, and it's and and again I guess it comes down to you know the the, the value of what you have and what you're doing for them. Okay, don't don't I mean it's it's not. Uh, it's important to keep that in mind. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Bob, um, they, there's a couple more questions and then sure. we can move on to the next slides and stop sure. for some more questions. Yeah, go for uh, it. The digital initiatives, what digital initiatives have you pursued? Um, we've recently uh, put the Catholic Sentinel onto a into a digital format, a flipbook format. And we call it my Sentinel now, okay? And um, organically, 
uh, and by using uh, the da a database that we share with OCP, we send out a free subscription offer to the digital publication, okay? Mm -hmm. And this is uh, kind of a work in prize process right now. We've got the basics out there. We're working on some enhancements to make it of more value to the, um, uh, to the advertisers, for example. We'd like to be able to see hot links directly from the digital page that you mouse over to their site, okay? Uh, to create more value. Um, so that's, that's what I mean by the, a, a, a digital effort there. We also do things like Facebook and, uh, and, and Twitter, um, obviously to generate more interest in the paper itself. Uh, but, um, but I'd say these, both the, the digital publication and the hard publication itself are the two main um, venues for, for Catholic Sentinel. Is, is your uh, digital distribution, is that housed on your server client, your server? Client, yes. server, or a third party? It's housed on our server, on OCP's server. Okay. Is there any problem with rates when doing this section, especially if client is selling ads? I'm, I'm not sure I understand the question. Kimberly, do you want to unmute and just clarify? It's actually me, Joanne, because I didn't get in. Oh. I, I'm, um, Hi, Joanne. Yeah, sorry. Uh, what I meant is like, so let's say you, sh you, if the client is selling the edge, you come up with a price and, and they might sell it. Let's say your quarter page is, you sell it for $500. They're selling for $600 and, or, or you know, and I'm, you basically, is, is there a problem with that? Like, you know? <laughs> No, Joanne, and and and, it, and, it, and 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 the example it, it would be like this: um, Catholic Charities, and uh, in, in we're going to look at some specific pages that they have here in just a moment. But what they're doing is they are selling basically they're selling sponsorships to their event, okay? Mm -hmm. And with a with whatever level of sponsorship they have, and I have no idea how much they they you know, they charge for sponsorships with whatever, let's say they, they're charging $10,000 for a gold level sponsorship. And with that gold level, level sponsorship comes a quarter page in the special insert that they produce, okay? Mm -hmm. So I have no idea what that is. And we don't sell uh, those ads to, uh, uh, to, to their clients direct like that, okay? Mm -hmm. I got you, thanks, Bob. You bet. Um, the other thing though, Joanne, is the other example that I used is uh, the CYO insert where we actually do go out and we sell those ads, okay? Um, and we try to sell them as close to the regular, the, 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 um, uh, the page rate that we do the rest of the paper. Oh, so then you don't have a problem, right? Oh, that's good. Thank you. We've never, we've never enco uh, encountered a problem that way. And part of it comes into the sales um, conversation that you have with folks. Um, they really do understand what this is all about. And it's important to convey in the sales process what this is all about, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. Their support, they're not just getting uh, their own ad out to potential customers of their own, but they know and understand the value of CYO and what it does for the, for the community and specific for kids. And they're helping the organization, right? Exactly. That, mm -hmm. that is a huge thing. Right. And a lot of companies, especially Catholic-owned companies, are really into that. Right. Thank you, Bob. Bob, uh, there's one more question. Uh, sure. And it's regarding the percentage of advertising for postal purposes. Mm -hmm. So for when I mentioned we do inserts like this a little bit differently, but um the ad, the back page that i explained were the ads that is the advertising percentage we use we don't use the articles they submit we don't add that as advertising inches how do you do yours um to, to be, be perfectly frank um, that is something that's done by our production department okay uh, i don't cal i don't make that calculation the vast majority of our, our 
uh, distribution is done in bulk, okay, uh, to perish as much as you would single copy sales, okay, on the street in a, in a, in a secular paper. Um, a relatively small number are actually mailed, okay, but that being said, they still go through that process, production still goes through that process and makes those calculations and reports. And Marge, my answer to that is kind of what I told you. We would still put in those ads as inches, but not the editorial content, which actually for us comes right from the different office. Okay, why don't we move on with the next slides and then okay. we'll open it up for question again. Sure. So um, this particular case study is, is again about Catholic charities and, um, and we talked a little bit about what that purpose is so we won't rehash that necessarily right now. Um, but um, again, what, what their primary goal really is, is uh, along with raising the funds, they are trying to educate an audience that they really have admittedly have not done a good job with educating um, on their own. Um, and ge geographically largely. They're not reaching out to the South Oregon area or the coast area, but largely their, their, their support and the information and, and the response back from them has been in the Portland area. So this has been a, a key reason why they've been doing this insert. Um, again, this is the, the cover of, of uh, that insert themselves. A typical page, and there are four of them that I'm showing you as examples here. Um, there are two different things that we're seeing here. Um, Rick Burko is the uh, CEO and, and uh, head of Catholic Charities of Oregon, and he is a key driver uh, for this insert. This is terribly important to him. Um, and he is a contributor, obviously, about what the, 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 the mission of this insert is about, and what the about what their um, what their goal is for this year it might be something different for each year. And this year, it's about stories of strength and courage and compassion, and that's what this insert is all about. By the way, as kind of a side note, and before I forget, um, there I have set aside copies, hard copies of this insert for anybody who wants them. Okay. And so at some point here, Amy, is there a way for us to be able to gather those folks or have those folks send in their information where we can mail them a copy? Yes. If you would like uh, Bob to mail you a copy, simply drop your name and address in the chat box and we, can, we will save the chat at the end and, and Bob can use that to send for the mailing. Very good. Okay, great. Thank you. So down below, you see the two uh, one six page ads. This may be a silver sponsorship that folks have have uh, been awarded by Catholic Charities for their contribution at a particular level. Uh, by the way, they don't necessarily, and, and this is important, especially for Catholic Charities and uh, and and even CYO, the companies that that. That, that I've found that are a part of these inserts aren't necessarily Catholic owned, okay? Um, these are people, however, who understand the value of what it is that Catholic Charities is doing. And so it is, I mean, don't, don't put the blinders on and say to yourself, I have to go to just my existing, my, my existing um, you know, uh, client audience. I, I, can, I can really cast the net further. And most people know most businesses know uh, what Catholic Charities does, okay? And, um, you know, or, or, or what CYO does, excuse me. And, and, and it's an easier, for lack of a better term, it's an easier sell. So uh, Bologenic, I don't believe, is or, or LMC Construction are Catholic owned, but they understand the value of what Catholic Charities does, especially in the current climate with immigration issues. Um, you know, you know, making the headlines and an important piece of 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 what their of what Catholic Charities does. Okay. Another page from that, you can see where Providence Healthcare is is a part of this insert. Uh, same with um, you know uh, financial folks, and the the breadth of who participates is not necessarily limited to. Um, 
to nonprofits. Um, again, they they vary and they're wide ranging. Okay. Uh, Peace Health, another um, you know regional uh, medical organization, they might be a, a target for uh, for doing an, an insert. Uh, it may be you know you can you know open your mind a little bit and say it might be a cooperative kind of a thing between Peace Health and Providence Healthcare that you can explore. Um, you know the interest. I mean, there's a lot of information that people don't know. Um, about the current health situation out there that people want to know more about. And that might be an opportunity for you to be able to get together with these folks and say, hey, what about something that, that really is um, uh, informative and factual and clear to, to, to vulnerable people? In our particular case, most of our readers are seniors, okay? So in this particular climate, they have a strong interest in, in knowing the facts and kind of clearing things out. We mentioned planning and organization and how critical it is. And these are kind of sort of the steps, the one, two, three, four, fives about, about putting together an insert and some of the different um, tasks that you need to do. You're, you need to get together with, with, a, with a potential client that's willing to, to sit down with you and go through what this might be for them and understand what the scope of the project might be. What are they trying to achieve, okay? Um, and what it is, and, and 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 what it is that you can kind of envision yourself doing, and that's meeting one. Over the course of, of the next few weeks, you're talking to your you're talking to your staff, you're looking at your schedules, you're saying, you know, can this? Do we have do we have time to do this? Um, you know, how much time do we need to do this? I guess. Um, do we meet the, 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 the client's deadline for getting this done or, or producing this in February? And how far back do we have to, 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 do, to, to, to plan to do this project? Again, we start talking to our clients in this particular, in, in Catholic Church, we start talking to them in July, okay? And we start getting down to the nitty gritty um, of, of um, uh, specific article topics uh, no later than October, okay? And starting in November, Catholic, or, uh, the Catholic Sentinel start those, those um, writers start going to work in putting together the, doing the interviews, putting together the articles. And then, um, and, and then that, and that's, again, that's, that's kind of the project scope. Uh, the, the proposal acceptance here, they understand, Here's the cost. Here's what it's going to cost you. Um, they're signing off on it, and, and kind of sort of that's where the, 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 the trigger gets pulled and the way you go. Developing a project schedule, okay, uh, and the editorial schedule for doing these things. Um, coordinating, you know, one particular person, or maybe usually it's one particular person uh, to pull in the ad materials, okay. Um, and then fulfillment, the distribution, the actual print and distribution of the piece itself. Those are the three, the five, excuse me, the five key areas that are involved. Uh, this is what a planning and production schedule looked like for the Catholic Charities insert this year, okay? And uh, again, this will be on, this, on, on, the, on, the, on the slideshow that, I, that, Amy, we can get back out to folks after the after the meeting. Um, you can see in this particular case, um, the initial planning meeting actually, again, it started in July, but what we decided to do was when we were, when we said, okay, this is when we're really going to, to, to pull the trigger on getting editorial folks um, out there and start doing their thing. Uh, we have finalized the story list and we have a, a place where um, the stories come in from Catholic Charities and Catholic Sentinel. Those stories, I can't particularly share with you those, those particular stories, but what you'll see there uh, is that those, that story list is carved up. Maybe there's 13 stories out there that we're going to include in this, in this insert. Um, nine of them are being written by the Catholic Sentinel 
Four of them are being uh, submitted by Catholic Charities. All of them get edited and um, by the Catholic Sentinel staff, okay? Um, we go through the, the, when we give them a time date about when the sponsor ads have to close uh, in order to get in the materials. We go through the, the, um, the, the print orders and the proofing and the soft proofs from the printer. And then we get into the when copies mail and ship, okay? This is what the editorial schedule might look like in what for, for the Catholic Charities piece, okay? We map this out again. This is a 16 page insert, okay? Um, as we meet with, uh, during one of the times when we, we would meet with the client as they're kind of mapping out, you know, the length of the articles and so forth, this is when we decide who's going to be submitting photos, how many photos will be with each story, and we get a visual in our heads about what those pages might look like. We've been doing this three or four years in a row, and so we kind of got it down. But obviously, if you're just starting, you're kind of you know mapping it out, scratching it out on paper about you know what the look might look and feel might be of that uh, of that uh, of that insert. Okay. Um, we largely, you know, in terms of placement and pagination. We get a feel from the client about what are the key stories. Where, you know, what do they really want to try to 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 emphasize the most? In this particular case, it might be the bond program in the cathedral village that they have going on, and um, uh, the infographics that they may want, or, or you know how jumps work from page to page, um, and then we're you know, key sponsorship, uh, full page editorial, excuse me, full page ads fit in. So it kind of gives you, your editorial team, a roadmap to work with about, you know, pulling together the, the insert. Uh, on the editorial side, there's typically one uh, key person in, in, our, uh, uh, in our particular case, Katie Scott, um, who really kind of heads up the editorial side and she'll sign out and gather in and, and be the the the, um, the chief uh, organizer on that editorial side of the of the insert. On the advertising side, we talked about with the Catholic Charities example that they are uh, selling or, or or I guess assigning. Uh, ad sizes to this, the, the sponsorship. And um, if you look down below left there, you'll see the level in the Catholic Sentinel and the El Sentinel. Uh, by the way, this is being, they, they do a, an insert in both Catholic Sentinel and El Sentinella. Um, and obviously it's translated. But let's take it again to keep things simple. Let's take a look at, at, at the Catholic Sentinel side. So you can see where there's a presenting uh, space and then you have the platinum and the gold and the silver. Um, it's, it's, it's fairly clear here. And when I get, uh, what will happen is I'll get an email from my contact at Catholic Cherries. They're gonna say that Providence, Pacific Seafood and, and Cambria uh, Health Solutions are in. Uh, they're gonna get a, a, um, a gold level quarter page and um, as you see the account number up there, that's the account in our, 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 um, in our system, our CRM system assigned to them as regular customers. And, and it's, that's where I, I get my information about who my contact might be for fulfilling the, for fulfilling the materials. Um, it's important, huge important to keep something like this and work with something like this as a tool set as an advertising contact. Uh, because there's a lot of moving pieces and parts and it can get complicated and keeping track of what's happening at any given time is critical. Um, so understanding and in the in the one of the last columns you see Sentinel in Sentpub. Sentpub is is our production software that tracks and maps um, and where the the actual ad materials live. Okay. Um, so um, that should give you an idea. Uh, down below is just something I do to try to keep track of, of how many ads will, will fit in the, 
um, in the in this section. So you see the, the in the gray box down below um, those ad sizes, and then I compare them to what it was done last year. And I look at last year's, and I say to myself, okay, that was a good fit ad to edit ratio. That's what we're shooting for. Okay. Uh, as we get close to the, the deadlines for ad materials, I'll be in contact and I share this document with a client and saying, okay, you know, we've got three spaces left, kind of slow down the horses there and, uh, you know, keep that in mind. This is what we got to, to work with. Um, if, in it, in it, it can be one of these things where if you've got a 12 pager planned, you know what, I, they're saying I've, I've got six more sponsors that may want to be in this thing. And then that's when you start talking about an additional four pages, okay? And those costs and, and what's, what's involved with the work and whether you can even accept that given the amount of workload that your editorial team has to, has to work with. It's again, one of the things we looked at very, very first, and I apologize for the slide program. Um, you are, you know, you, it, it is, really important to stay on top of what's going on at any given time. Um, and communication is, is just imperative within your own organization. Um, I don't mean to make it sound daunting. It's not daunting, it really isn't, but it does require attention and kind of keeping track of what's going on, okay? So this is kind of the where we are at the end and um, what you do uh, it is as, as an advertising representative, as an editorial, uh, you know, a staff member, as, a, as, a, as a, a, a leader there is important. Uh, it's vital to what the mission of your diocese and, and the church is all about these days. Communication is key and, and it's influential. Uh, don't undervalue what you do. Uh, it is, it's, it's terribly important and it's important for you to, to, to keep that in your mind. Okay. Amy, that's what I've got. So we will open it up to questions. We have about, uh, 15 minutes before we'll watch the Cardinal John Foley award together. So, um, if anybody, we have a couple questions in the chat, but then we can invite everyone that has a question to unmute, uh, to share, and maybe even talk about how COVID has affected your advertising. I know for us, I spent a couple weeks uh, removing ads as faster than I scheduled them. And uh, they're starting to come back now. So things are starting to pick up for us, but it's, uh, it's been a slow transition in the last week or two. It's gotten very active and I'm hoping as groups of people can come together, we start to see more of the retreats and the events that we lost. But we've had, we have some pretty generous people in our diocese, so that's been great. I am going to jump back to, first Bob, a lot of people, some people are asking for a PDF file of those, those papers. Are you able to? Okay, so they have put emails in there. Some have put addresses. So we will save the chat for you. One th other thing is, would it be possible for you to drop the PowerPoint file into the chat? That way you wouldn't have to email that to people, but if they wanted to look back on it, they can download it from the right. chat. Yeah, if Amy, if you don't mind helping me do that, <laughs> so if you, you happy yeah sure so as we go back and answer the questions or maybe while we're playing the video what you would do is open the chat and there's a little file it says file and there's a little um next to the two you would click on that file and then click on your computer and find the file on your computer and it will drop right into the chat okay we'll give it a shot um, so let, let me just scroll back here for a couple of questions. What paper stock and binding are you using? So, um, 
it's the same size as the rest of the paper. We do a, um, an 11 by 17 tab, okay? Uh, and uh, we try to keep it the same stock as the, reg the rest of the paper, okay? Mm -hmm. um, if you want to do something, if, and, and this, this probably applies more to if you are working with, um, let's say a 60 brightness sheet uh, in, in, for your regular paper. And what, but what you can do is, as part of your quote process, uh, you can quote it on a higher basis paper, okay? Uh, paper stock, and you work with your printer on doing that. And again, that's part of your pricing. Um, you, you, you know, one of the goals that you want the, 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 the insert to do is to pop out, to stand out. And you don't have to, to make your entire uh, um, issue the same, but you certainly can make the insert itself a little bit higher quality stock. Sure. Um, Jean is asking if this is the only session that deals with possible revenue sources. And there are just three sessions in the business track. I, I see he's looking to discuss weddings, anniversaries, obituaries. Um, we will be having free webinars in the following weeks after the conference. So if that's something we might be interested in doing like an advertising round table and just bringing those ideas together, maybe we even just have everyone bring uh, one tip of something that they have generated added revenue that's really worked for them. And if everybody's interested in that, we can set that up through, uh, through the CPA. So if you have topics, that brings up a great point. If you have topics in the business track of something specific you would like to see for a future webinar, drop that in the chat and I'll share that with the board and uh, Jen Brinker who organizes the webinars and we can come back together and talk about those. If that works for all of you. If we have a few minutes, we can address that. We're about 10 minutes away from the video. There's an official countdown on the, the website. Um, Paul is asking, we have had to do a couple of online only regular issues. How do you determine what to change advertisers for this as opposed to regular print uh, rates? We have not done that. Has anybody um, moved advertisers to online only editions? That one. We have done that, but what I have been doing is giving them like a COVID discount. <laughs> and um, people seem to like that. I said it's just temporary, but we're like, we give them a really nice rate, um, like, even lower than the frequency rates and and I am getting them to uh, jump in if you will because we did lose a lot of advertisers just due to this and the fact that a lot of them do seminars and retreats at monasteries etc so um, I, I've just been trying to be very creative with the type of advertising they can do and also give them a nice little discount to keep them happy. So I'll put some guilt on them so that they'll come back when things are better. So I hope it's working. Seems to be. Sure. Anyone else that does online only? How have they moved people? Like if your paper is no longer, how you've moved people, advertisers to your online platforms? I do have a question, Amy, that ties into COVID and what we're all going through is of course, when it comes to the travel industry, the travel agencies, the pilgrimages, you name it, that was probably my top uh, advertisers that canceled the most. Just curious what everyone else might have had. Industry-wise, might have been maybe second or third, or was it just a combination of things, if, uh, if I'm making sense on something? Yeah, so Kevin, uh, that first week that COVID hit and we knew we were gonna work from home, uh, I had three pilgrimage companies pull all of their ads who had 
12 or 21 time contracts. I had all of the retreat centers that are in our paper pull their ads. So we are blessed with uh, Catholic College in our diocese, St. Norbert College. They have many events, pulled all the event ads. The St. Norbert Abbey pulled all of their Abbey ads. They are still doing some things with us, but anything tied to an event or a pilgrimage was pulled. Yeah. And I'm finding, so we renew contracts fiscal year and calendar year. Uh, and so this past month I've been renewing contracts for July 1. And I found it interesting, there were two assisted living homes that said their budgets have been cut. So they actually changed what they're doing, which surprised me, but some one of them particular was in our paper every week, but they were doing events at the assisted living, like things for the community to draw people in. So I can understand why they don't want to run those. I have a, we have a couple, does that answer your question, Kevin? Someone said we lost our restaurant advertisers immediately, of course, because they shut down. We had one who was doing curbside pickup the entire time. They were offering meals to students. So they ran a few ads in our paper. That was one restaurant ad we were able to retain throughout COVID. Um, yeah, we were just doing our, um, what I do, usually in the months, February during Lent, I, we, I have a special section for restaurants, especially with fish fries, vegetarian menus, and those type of things. And it was right at that time in the middle of all the Knights of Columbus and some of the restaurants I had, they were all gone. It's like, Kevin, you got to cancel the ad. This is like, oh my gosh, you know, there goes the revenue straight down, which of course, uh, most of us too, I don't know, it would have been a salary plus a commission thing. So personally, if it hits you, like it hits them and it goes right downhill. Correct. And then you also have like the parish picnics <laughs> that are now drive up picnics they're not all advertising because their revenues down so uh someone noted fish fries the pandemic hit in the middle of our fish fries so they ran for a little bit and then were stopped we did have a couple parishes that did uh pick up fish fries so they continued uh bob asked has anyone had success with a custom publication of this type with a secular non-church institution or corporation, something that ordinarily would not advertise in your publication. So ideas like we have a, a construction company here and they did a huge half page ad supporting all the healthcare workers. That was an ad we would not have gotten without COVID. Um, they are in and out of our paper often, but has anybody had ads that they wouldn't have gotten if it wasn't for the pandemic? Amy, we had um, Providence Healthcare um, place a full page ad uh, in, in, in a recent issue celebrating um, healthcare workers, I think they call it healthcare workers week, okay? Uh, this last month. Yeah, I was specifically thinking of the custom publication uh, aspect. You know, get getting uh, you know a, a regional trash remover to explain in their uh, in a four-page insert how they're uh, being environmentally sound. For example, you know, somebody wanting to link to. Uh, a Catholic value of, of some kind. And I think that they might not necessarily advertise with a, uh, with the cap, with a Catholic newspaper or a Catholic magazine, um, but they might want to do something educational that way about, um, you know, in, environmental kinds of issues. Sure, it could be something like that. Think about it though, it could also go a little bit more broad and your insert might be about essential workers. So you're covering the grocery stores, okay? You're covering the trash folks. Um, you know, you're covering the mechanics. Um, you know, some of those folks. 
city, uh, city transportation. I think I can think of, of probably several that would be interested in that. We're going to transition over. We have just four minutes and we want to catch the beginning of the video. So I'm going to screen share the Cardinal Foley Award. Feel free to continue to drop comments or questions in the chat box. We can quickly go through those before we dismiss following the award. If some of you need to sign off, we understand because the session did go till 1230. I will look into an advertising roundtable, so watch for that coming out in member news. If you're not a member, um, feel free to take advantage of the membership uh, drive that's happening during the conference. So a huge thank you and thumbs up to uh, Bob for a great presentation today. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I truly appreciate everybody. Thank you to all the people that joined us. It's great to be with you. So I will start the screen share. The video is not officially live yet, but can you all see it? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. So it's hard to tell what's um, actually on everyone else's screen when you're. says three minutes, so it's... If anybody has a question while we wait these last couple minutes, feel free to hop right in. This is like, I feel like we need a drum roll for the last couple minutes. <laughs> oh, we could give you a weather update if you like here in Rockford, Illinois. <laughs> it's uh, about 90, here right? 90, <laughs> yeah, here 90 and cloudy here and there. Same situation for the uh, 4th of July weekend. Yeah, it is here as well. Um, it's been a very hot week. It would have been a little cooler in Portland. <laughs> yeah. Oh, do I, you know, going to some of these CMCs, and I, Amy, I know you got to watch the time. They're fabulous. They're great. I've been to many of them. It was great to meet Amy and so many and some of the others that I see here. Hopefully next year we'll all be back on track meeting one another, wherever it might be, Amy. I don't even know what, what the itinerary is. We sure yes. hope so. And, um, you will see a welcome video to Baltimore for next year coming out during the conference. So watch for that. Um, and also if, for our national planning team, do drop any suggestions for sessions for the business track in the comments so we can look into speakers for next year as well. So we can do webinars uh, for the next few weeks and throughout the year, it is coming. It says it's going to begin. Um, but also suggestions for next year are helpful. Or if you're willing to lead a session, you could leave a note that you'd like to do that as well. The countdown is done. So each session this morning is going to play the video at the end of their session. 12.30. And the CPA really owes a huge shout out to Chaz Muth because he put so much time into all the videos and all the work for the awards. He's He's really done a lot and been great to work with. Here we go. Can you hear it? Yeah. 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 Feels like New Year's all over again.
John Patrick Foley as the patriarch of the American Catholic Press. He was a Catholic communicator who employed multiple communication platforms. He brought the news of the Catholic Church to the faithful in the United States. He helped us understand the church. Cardinal Foley served as the assistant editor and Vatican correspondent for Philadelphia's Archdiocesan newspaper. He was the editor-in-chief there from 1970 until 1984. Cardinal Foley also co-produced and co-hosted Philadelphia Catholic Hour on WFIL Radio. He also served as president of the Pontifical Council for Social Communications. And those of us who had a chance to know him can attest to his sense of humor. His life continues to set a standard for Catholic journalists to follow. That's what the Cardinal John P. Foley Award recognizes. It is given to a person who demonstrates excellence and innovation in Catholic storytelling. That storytelling can take many forms, including video, podcasts, photography, and multimedia presentations. The Board of Directors received a number of nominations this year. And no kidding, they were all good. The winner of the 2020 Cardinal John P. Foley Award is Chaz Muth of Catholic News Service. His nomination reads as follows. In 2019, there are numerous examples of his work in photography, videography, animation, and multimedia storytelling. This past year, he developed several important series that combined solid news reporting with strong visual storytelling. One was a series on the seal of the confessional. Chaz used long form videography, photography, and text form writing to take a nuanced and balanced look at laws being introduced and a history of the often misunderstood sacrament. Chaz traveled across the country researching this story and produced a four-part series in print and seven companion videos outlining the issues. He also created one social media video and one comprehensive documentary video. He spoke with both critics and defenders and helped to explain why it is an important issue for Catholics. Last year, he also did a three-part print series with companion videos on the history of the Catholic Film Office. Using historical footage and a wealth of on-camera interviews, he explained the issues that gave rise to the Legion of Decency and the Hays Code, the evolution of the office over the years, and where it stands today. His series brings to light a fascinating piece of U.S. Catholic cultural history. Taking his talents in a new direction, Chaz also created an animated short, which was the clever use of an easily approachable visual format to teach Catholics a bit of their own history reminding them that how bishops are appointed now was not always the way it was done. Chaz embodies the great values of multimedia reporting, important stories told in video and print, providing timely information that both informs Catholics and serves the church. Congratulations, my friend. You set a high bar for all of us. I cannot tell you what an honor this is to receive the Cardinal Foley Award. Anything with Cardinal Foley's name on it is more than an honor, and it's incredibly humbling. He was a giant in the Catholic press. And wow, what, a, what an incredible innovator in everything that he touched. I really want to thank the Catholic Press Association for bestowing this honor on me, and especially considering 
all of the other incredible candidates that were up here for it this year. And I got to say, thank you to everyone in Catholic media. I've been a journalist for a very long time. And, you know, when I joined the Catholic press, well, I guess it's probably close to 15 years ago, I got a whole new home here. And that is, I tell people this all the time, and that is, you know, there are lots of stories that you do cover, and there are a lot of things that aren't always so happy to cover, but for the most part in the Catholic press, I get to cover the best that humanity has to offer. And I'm really grateful to that. I'm very humbled by this award. Thank you again. That was very well done. <laughs> and I had no idea that it was Chaz was the winner. <laughs> so well deserved. Um, so let's just ooh, turn off my chat. Escape this other screen here. Were there any final questions before we dismiss for today? Thank you, all. Tony. I I don't think we can hear you though. Oh, Tony. Maybe he's not talking to us. Doesn't look like your mute's on, Tony, so you should be able to hear you. Hmm. Unless he could type in his question or chat it. Oh, yeah. Tony, do you want to type it in? That's my one good idea for the day. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> We cannot hear you, Tony, about web advertising. Those of us who have the challenge of having web only publications, how do you all con convince investors to buy in? I think, Tony, that would be a, a good session. Uh, we could have, you know, one session on print publication, one for electronic publication, unless there's someone that wants to jump in and, um, and answer that today. So we sell much more print advertising than online advertising currently. Um, but we don't have a digital publication. So it's hard for me to answer that. We have online ads. But 